Hi, so this is block five of the 2022 sampler. Uh, this is my last year doing samplers. So this was one block I wanted to show you how to do. The other blocks I didn't do videos on because they really are very simple. But this block is paper pieced and I wanted to show you how to do paper pieced my way, which is with freezer paper, which I learned from some wonderful teachers. So it's a really great way of doing it where you don't have to pull the paper away from your stitches. So that's what I wanted to show you what to do on this one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our masters and I tell you to cut um, seven or four pieces, seven inch by seven inch of your freeze freezer paper. And then you're going to stack them onto here. I've already trimmed mine down because I was using them. So, but you staple in four places. So I did one, two, three, four, stapled it together. Take out the thread from your machine. Sew on the lines. You don't need to do the outside two. So I'm just see how perforated we get. But those are our sewing lines. So then we do that, then we are going to trim it out to the outside edge and that should be six and a half inches square. So you want to go out to the outside edge there, which is what I have done here. And then we're going to take the papers and we're going to, if you choose to do this, you can take and put your number, the background, whatever size, A1, A2, A3, A4, whatever, with the sizes. You can do that if you want to, or you can just, once you get the staples out, you can just use your master as your guide, but you can take the staples out and then you have your masters. Once we get the staples taken out, you have a shiny side. See, it's very shiny. We're gonna iron that down to the uh, ironing board. Not a wool mat, for sure. I did that and it ruined it. Or it didn't ruin the mat, didn't ruin the paper. It just had all those pieces of fiber on it. So I'm gonna take this over to here. I'm gonna take the one I drew my lines on, which is the one I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna place it down on my little ironing board here. And I'm just going to take and I'm gonna iron it down to get rid of that shininess. Kind of let it stick down. Doesn't take much because the presser foot wants to stick to that shininess. So now it's a much duller piece and now we can start sewing with it. So that is how I took and got rid of all the shininess off of my papers. Now we can take and we can fold back between one and two. We're going to take our three and a half inch background square the first one always goes right side down. The rest of them will always go right side up. Now I'm going to put this down on here so it's a quarter of an inch away from my bottom. And I'm going to take this now over to the ironing board and I'm gonna iron that. And I kind of try and bring it over to us just a quarter inch from both sides. Quarter at the bottom and a quarter on the side there. And we just take your iron and we iron it down. You must always put the iron to the freezer paper to make it stick. See, now it's stuck. So now we fold this back and we take our number two piece and you can put these two right sides together and you can sew them right. Put the needle next to the freezer paper, but not on it. So it's just right next to that fold. Okay, so now I have it out of the machine, so I can take this out and fold my paper back. From the front side, I can iron my piece over just to clean, clean up the seam. But now you must take and put the iron to the freezer paper of the piece we just added to hold it onto there. So the more we iron it down, the longer it will hold. Now we can take and fold back between number two and three, which is our background piece. And we can fold that back on the perforated line. So now we folded the paper back between two and three. So we can take and put the, the add a quarter ruler here, which locks right onto the seam. And I just love that. There's also a larger size if you have bigger projects. I tend to like the smaller one. It's just easier for me to handle. We're going to trim away that piece. And now we're going to add our background, which is the three, three by three and a half. I want you to know that these pieces are oversized, so they are big enough for you to piece, but sometimes 
The reason we do paper piecing, but what we wanna do is we wanna lay this down here, just center it onto that piece. But you wanna make sure that the paper itself is covered by the piece on the bottom. That's a really important thing to learn when you're paper piecing. The piece you're adding should always be covered by the piece on the bottom, okay? So now we can sew right next to that seam. And we're not sewing on the paper, but next to the fold. And now we fold the paper, the fabric back, fold the paper back. Then I can press this side here. I'll press that with the iron, just to kind of set the seam. Turn it over now and put the iron to that piece. That's the whole trick of freezer paper, paper foundation piecing, is that you're always ironing the paper to the piece. But when we're done with this, you'll be able to see the easy part of this. So now we're going to go to piece number four, which is our accent one. So the way I've laid my pieces out, it's already trimmed. If you need to, you can put the ruler on there and trim. I don't know that I have anything, I can't see a little bit there. But now we can take our accent one piece and place it right side up, put our paper on here. And I just wanna make sure that the corner here is covered by the piece on the bottom, which it is. And I have a little bit of space at the top for fudge factor. And now I'm gonna sew next to that. Okay, so I've added my accent one piece. I'm gonna fold it over, kind of finger press it again. Uh, just kind of press it over. Make sure you don't get the iron to the freezer paper because it will stick. Now I will put it on the piece that I just added to make it stick, the paper stick. And now we're gonna go back to our piece five, which is our background piece over here. And we do the same thing with this one as we did over here. So we'll get back to you in just a moment. <clears throat> so I've added my background piece and I press the paper down to it. Now I can fold back to my number six piece along that perforated line. Just crease that there. And we're going to use our ruler here and we're going to trim away. And see, I can just slide this ruler right on that seam. And now I'm going to add my accent. This one is accent two, four, rather. Uh, you're going to make two with four and two with um, accent six. So we make two of each and I'll show you the other one in just a moment. So this is going to line up very simply right at the top and down to the bottom and we sew again. So now we're going to add trim to for our last peach piece. So now we're going to just take and trim again uh, excess away. We'll add my last piece. Just want to make sure that it is covered at the tip and it's covered at the top. So I'll sew next to that and then I'll show you how to trim the block out. Okay, so now all my pieces are added on and I need to trim it. So now I've trimmed my paper to six and a half. So now I can take and I can lay any ruler down and trim it. Uh, you can also use a six and a half inch square and just trim this out. With, I'll get rid of all the access to the outside edge. And turn it around. Oops, didn't get that. Of course, it wants to bite me. And then put the ruler here. Trying to get it lined up so you can see. So I'm just trying to line it up right to the outside edges of my fabric. These little guys didn't want to take like it. Okay, so then you take the magic happens by just pulling this right off and you have, and you can reuse these papers four to five times, which is wonderful. The other colorway that I did is I did my other accent. And so these will go together like this and then this one will come down like that, and then this one will repeat over here. So that's our block.